Hello folks, today we're going to be cooking a little bit of a backstrap in a crock pot and I'm going to kind of discuss with y'all um, how I how I kind of cook deer meat. This here is cast iron skillet and uh, this is not pickled eggs and that um, some of y'all probably recognize that. Those don't, that is bacon grease uh, off of bacon from our grass fed hogs and uh, we didn't supplement their feed with anything and it was baked really good all the meat turned out real good but what we're gonna do is I got I got the deer meat thawing out and uh, it's a I'm using tenderloin or back strap uh, I've already cut the sinew and everything off and uh, as soon as it's thawed out I'm gonna scoop out some of that bacon grease into this pan and I'm gonna get it all melted and coat it really well and uh, not a, a big puddle, you know, it's not going to sit there and boil and it. it's just to uh, sear the outside of the meat. Excuse me. But, uh, and it's going to get uh, salt and pepper. And over here I got my seasonings laid out. And uh, I don't use uh, weird salt. I use sea salt because it's, it's supposed to be uh, better for you, healthier for you. Uh, it's more natural um, for, uh, for the people that like like doing that kind of cooking um, and then you know, just some some crushed black pepper uh, I don't have a pepper grinder to make fresh black pepper um, but uh, that's the salt and pepper that I use and uh, that'll get you know sprinkled over the meat and seared in the bacon grease in the pan just to sear on the outside uh, not gonna cook it at all just to sear it and then uh, it'll go in the crock pot on high for uh, about eight hours or until it's starting to you know roll fall apart you know fork tender is what we're after uh, and I also add in ground however you say that word that's I'm gonna leave that open for interpretation um, on a good day I'd probably call that cumin cumin um, <laughs> or the other way to pronounce it but uh, parsley flakes will get thrown on there and uh, some rubbed sage, just a small pinch of rubbed sage will take that a long way. And uh, also uh, onion powder goes in there, just a you know, couple good sprinkles of onion powder just to kind of give, um, well once the water goes in here, I don't know, I'll fill that up with water until it's like, you know, almost completely submerging the meat I want a little bit of the meat to stick out it kind of helps it weep a little bit um, blood and stuff like that and why that's important to me um, why I do stuff like that is to allow blood to escape one and so my wife will eat it two <laughs> she's not real big into wild game um, uh, unlike me, I've, I've eaten chunks of liver raw out of a deer, um, on a cold morning. She's not into that. Um, and then, uh, lastly here, garlic. Uh, this is some pretty good garlic. Um, you crack the lid open on that and you can smell it throughout the house. But, uh, that's, that's my seasonings and that's kind of the process of how this is going to go down as we go um i'll kind of i'll kind of slow down and if i can get this rigged up somehow i'm gonna try to figure out a a method to get the camera set where i can see where you can see the process of this getting seared and and some of the other goings on in in the kitchen here so bear with me I uh, had to adjust the music up a little bit. This is the last uh, song. Get uh, the end of gotta, gotta have good music when you're cooking. That's that's my my deal. Just just helps keep the the time rolling. Um, that's just in case. Uh, get visitors but I want to talk about cutlery real quick 
Uh, these are knives that I commonly use and generally carry on my person, uh, minus the Ulu, and that's that's that one right there. Uh, wife got this for me for Christmas not too not too long ago, uh, but uh, I can't remember. I thought we had a a card from it, but uh, I mean you can Google it and get them. Uh, this is more of a commercially made type of deal, uh, most of like a souvenir. But uh, this is really good uh, knife for chopping up uh, onion, pepper, even meat. Um, I've, I've processed uh, some of our hogs and and the deer that we're cooking today. I did a lot of cutting on it with this ulu. But uh, the the beauty of this thing is the curve in the blade, and then obviously the sharpness of this thing. You can actually take this thing and rock it back and forth and really get to going on your vegetables and and just dice that stuff up real quick um, awesome knife uh, let me turn this down just a little bit uh, in in the culture of the uh, the Inuit or Alaskan natives that uh, that designed this knife uh, I have heard and read that it is primarily a woman's knife, um, but you find a good tool, you find a good tool. Um, and next is uh, this one, this is actually homemade. Um, this is an old bandsaw blade uh, from a wood mill or wood sawmill, uh, and the handle is obviously uh, just wood and bolted, bolted on there. Uh, it's uh, not full tang, but it's it's got enough to it. Um, the you know it's not a throwing knife or anything, so I don't really care too much about balance. But it does have. I mean, it's a very lightweight knife, um, and that thing is very very sharp. Uh, it don't it don't look like much. It ain't nothing fancy, but I guarantee you, if you if you uh, had to use that for anything uh, like as in self-defense or something that thing would definitely open something up uh, and next is this knife that is a uh, another homemade knife I did not make that one I bought this in Pennsylvania at a uh, at an old man's shop and uh, it was $20 uh, very nice knife let me show you the sheath real quick That's the sheath that that knife came with. And for $20, that has been one of the best investments of my life. I have butchered two hogs, uh, two or three deer now. I have skinned, I don't know how many freaking coyote, coon, beaver, I mean, bobcat, you name it, that knife has been into more flesh than probably Hugh Hefner uh, <laughs> probably not that much but I mean it's it's done a lot of cutting and uh, well Hugh Hefner joke rest his soul but uh, that knife is, is a solid investment and the guy lives uh, just outside of uh, I believe Morgan Morgantown or Morganville Pennsylvania He's got a little mechanic shop, and right above that shop, there's an old cabin uh, built on top, and he's got all sorts of knives, uh, buffalo horns, pre-made powder horns, uh, wool clothing for period correct stuff, and um, rifles. I mean, you name it. If you're if you're into the mountain men era or any type of reenacting or anything like that, or you just like to hunt with that primitive firearm method uh, excellent shop and if you're ever around that area or if you live around that area and don't know about him uh, go check him out it's awesome and real quick um, I'll show you something take a guess of what those are and 
Those are going to be cooked and brought to the family dinner this Christmas Eve. If anybody in my family sees this and guesses what they are, they don't have to eat them. But those are going to be cooked and fed on a little plate with some dipping sauce just to see what people think of them because I'm that kind of son. Stuff and onion, got my seasoning on top. Just a little bit on top. They don't take a whole lot to season meat. But that's that's pretty much pretty much my seasoning. Uh, we're gonna get the meat put in there, get this dude cranked up, and let her start cooking. 